The opinions expressed in the following program are not necessarily those of Eastlink TV, its sponsors, or partners. You can choose to be you alone. You can choose to be a choose friend. Choose to be a friend. You can choose. 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 You can choose. You can choose from seventy shades of blue. Seventy. Shades you can choose blue. to ignore you. You. Choose. You can choose <laughs> to run wild. <laughs> you can choose. choose not to watch. You can choose, choose to keep a secret. <laughs> to be shy. You can choose to believe the dogs understand. You can choose to be bored. Choose. You can choose to dream. <laughs> dream. I. I. You can choose. You can choose. Because you can. Yeah. to the episode. My name is Sean McLaren and I promise you we have a great show planned out for you tonight. And when I say promise you, well, the two out of the four shows we shot were pretty good, so this one might be okay too. So don't worry, sit back and relax. We got some great things coming for you. Now, summer is almost over and fall is upon us, which means that my favorite holiday is coming up. That's right, Halloween is right around the corner. And now the reason I love Halloween so much is because of the costumes. But I'm thinking that, you know, maybe all these sexy costumes are a little bit played out, you know? The sexy cop, the sexy firefighter, the sexy garbage man. That's getting old. <laughs> this year, I'm challenging all of you ladies out there to be a little bit more creative. Let's think about those professions that maybe haven't been touched upon yet. What about the sexy bearded lady? Or maybe even the sexy cat woman screaming in the streets, complete with the smell of cat pee. <laughs> How's about the sexy Tim Hortons woman with the actual hairnet and the shattered dreams? <laughs> if you guys can pull this off and make it sexy, do me a favor, take a photo of yourself and post it on our Facebook page, and you might be able to win a night out in the town with our producer, Maher. What? Not enough incentive? That's fine. We're actually gonna throw in a back rub from our cameraman, Charles. <laughs> He's sexy in his own sad way, don't you worry. <laughs> now, I don't know if you guys heard about this one, but this is one thing that's really, really bothering me. City Council recently approved a plan to raise the fees on parking meters, as well as the fines for infracting upon those parking meters by 25%. The rationale with this one is that it'll bring more people downtown. <laughs> yeah, because that makes sense, right? Hold on, wait a minute. Actually, next week, they're actually trying to approve a plan that will release wild tigers and poisonous snakes down at the Grace, Am Grace Hartman Amphitheater in a bid to bring more people down there in the summer. Are you guys as mad as me right now at all the Facebook changes that are going on? What the deuce, Zuckerberg? Exactly. You're messing with the good thing. What is it? Not enough to have billions of dollars and a hit movie about your life? You gotta screw with the little people? You know what? I was so angry at those changes, I actually turned off my computer and started reading something called a book. <laughs> but then I got a paper cut. <laughs> you and me are throwing down, Zuckerberg! <laughs> actually, the one thing that really bothered me the most was the fact that I couldn't find the poke button. If you guys know what the poke button is, it actually lets you electronically poke people you don't really know and get away with it. I used to be able to do that in real life, but people call me creepy. <laughs> I had a lot of restraining orders, so now I'm really, really mad about these Facebook changes. I want the poke button back. 
Actually, that reminds me of a bucket list I've been creating. It's uh, not one of those bucket lists where you're talking about, you know, like climbing Mount Everest or going skydiving or having tea with the Dalai Lama, because I've already done all those things. <laughs> But what I'm thinking is like a list of things that I don't have the guts to do that may be considered socially inappropriate. In no particular order, here they are. Number one, I would love to go up behind a hipster with those big hoops inside of their ears, run up behind them and put a padlock in it and then run away. <laughs> Number two, I would love to walk into a crowded elevator, turn around really slowly to the crowd, cross my arms like this and say, I suppose you're wondering why I brought you here today. <laughs> and then turn around really slowly and fart. <laughs> Number three, I would love to someday get really, really drunk, grab my friend's parakeet and throw it at his piggy bank and then scream, Angry Birds! <laughs> so, someone's, someone's not a fan of Angry Birds in the crowd. That's fine, that game is awesome. I don't care what you say. Maybe they just love birds a lot, who knows. Now, right now, the news is covering all the elections. Lot of politics, lot of drama, debates, screaming, ranting. We have Jerry LaBelle in the audience, so he knows all about that. But no offense to Canadian politics, I just like watching the Americans. The Americans during election time is awesome because they're all crazy. I miss the days when Sarah Palin was the scariest Republican candidate. And I miss the days when George Bush reminded me of my Uncle Joe after he got kicked in the head by that horse. Twice. Twice. <laughs> he was never quite the same after that. Yeah. What is really scary now is that you got people like Michelle Bachman, who actually looks like her eyes are going to explode right out of her head. And she has actually admitted that she hears voices telling her to run for president. And then you have a guy like Rick Perry, whose major claim to fame is the fact that he has executed more prisoners in the state of Texas than any other governor before him. I mean, that is messed up. Kind of makes me feel like I should bake a batch of cookies for the mayor and Bartolucci, sending them a note saying, you know what, we may not always agree, but at least you're not totally crazy. <laughs> And in a related story, there was actually a huge, huge breakout out of a mental institution here in Ontario. 21 mental patients actually escaped from their institution. But staff didn't really actually notice it. They didn't think anything of it because all of them were talking to themselves, but they had Bluetooth devices on them. The moral of the story is, you can be as crazy as you want, as long as it looks like you're talking to one of those things. <laughs> we have a great show for you guys tonight. It is going to be a blast. Thank you very much for tuning in. And of course, stick around because we have a lot more to show here on the episode. Never at any other time have we faced such a huge epidemic of high cholesterol, heart disease, diabetes, and obesity. North America has plunged into it the luxury of excess because of a complete lack of self-control and foods that are unhealthy something needs to be done about it. And here at Wacko Willys, we're the ones to do something about it. We're gonna fight fire with fire. You ever have a carrot that tastes as good as a big fat juicy steak? Me neither. I'd rather eat the rabbit instead of eating the carrot. Here at Wacko Willys, you get it whatever you want. As long as it's deep fried, meat stuff, cheese top, sugar powder, or of course, batter. That's a favorite word here at Wacko Willis. Now, don't you worry about what size you are, because we got the extra large super double boots with a thousand pound endurance rating. That's right, thousand pounds of your big bum in our boots eating our food. Hey, we even got brontosaurus ribs. That's right, just like in the Flintstones. Them big old suckers, well I'm rich, and I cloned a couple of them just because they look darn tasty. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, I can't even get out of bed, I can't even bathe myself, and the diabetes have made me go blind. Well, you don't have to see to taste how delicious our food is. Woo! All right, I tell you, Wacko Willis is a place to be. All right, come on down now, bring your entire family. I don't care what size they are, we got food for them at Wacko Willis. Thank you.
Hey guys, welcome back to the episode. My name is Sean and I am here right now at On The Rock Student Center at Cambrian College with Stereos. Thanks a lot for being here today, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks for having us. So you guys are here doing the Frost Show. Uh, did you guys see yourself when you guys were starting out a couple years back thinking that you would be having all this crazy success that you have now? I mean, a couple Juno nominations, two albums, touring across Canada. How's it feel in the short time? About three years now? This is kind of crazy ride? It's been about three years. I think, uh, I think when you start out, you have big dreams and everything, but you never really know exactly what you'll get or what it'll amass to, right? So uh, to answer your question, I guess we never really saw going this far, yeah. so we've been very blessed. Well, you guys have been wildly successful since doing Disband on Much. Absolutely. You guys walked away doing that show, and uh, so you started off, let me follow this through, we started off as uh, Stand By Me, Yes. and then we went on to Turn It Up, and then Stereos happened. Yeah. You yeah. guys missed the old names? No. Uh, Stand By Me a little bit, I love yeah. that name. We had yeah. a connection with that name. But... It'll always be like a special spot, because it was the first, the first name, and it was the name that got us uh, kind of off the ground. Okay. But, uh, Apparently it's a movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and a hit song. song yeah. no, Weird. No. Really? Would, yeah, 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 Benny King, you should look it up. Uh, okay, well, sitting back, you guys did the disband thing. When you, are, when you were on disband, were you looking at that as your big shot? Was the pressure on? Like, how stressful of experience was that? It's definitely, uh, we, we knew going into it, we thought best case scenario is that, because we live in Edmonton, such a remote area, mm -hmm. how are we going to get people to hear our music? So we just thought, best case scenario, people will see us across Canada. We had no idea it would turn into what it was. So I don't think we were that nervous as, as much as we were just excited to get our songs and our band uh, some exposure. Just riding the ride. Yeah. I mean, you were working with some really talented people at that point. Brian Norrie was helping you guys out doing your mentorship, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And then you guys, of course, had uh, Gene Simmons in the crowd for your showcase. How much of a trip was yeah. that, seeing Gene Simmons sitting there watching you guys play? Greg Simmons, or uh, Gene Simmons, <laughs> It was like it was really cool to see him in the crowd. Uh, I think it was. I was never really a big Kiss fan to be honest, so I was not nervous at all. And uh, I found out he had a really weak handshake, and we met him for about 20 minutes, and that was it. Yeah. It's pretty simple. Yeah. Never, never takes off his sunglasses. Never takes off his sunglasses. We don't even know no. if he has eyes. Yeah. It wouldn't have surprised Chances me actually. Are, yeah. Chances are they're probably computer generated just for family jewels. He sold he those to the real. devil in order for this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Must have. That's what it was. Well, it's probably to uh, get that many women, I think you had to make a deal with the devil. I don't know. Gene Simmons does it with his helmet hair. Yeah, no kidding. It's pretty bad, man. Okay, well, you guys are here right now doing the Frosh Tour. What, uh, what about Frosh Weeks? What about doing the college tours that you guys dig? Do you do enjoy them? Or what's, what's a good show for you? Yeah, I think they're the best, to be honest, because yeah. they're played to uh, kids that are close to our age, which yeah. is nice, so it's always good to play to uh, all the people that uh, we can relate to more than, I mean, we love our fans, but a lot of them are so young that right. playing people to college. Yeah, we're stoked for back to school time. They may yeah. not like it, but we're stoked. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. well this is your play time, right? Exactly. I mean, they yeah, get the exactly. books and the homework, so you guys just get to come in, do your show, have a blast. Exactly, yeah. it's a good time. Any chance to uh, get out afterwards and uh, party it up in the towns you're in? We'll see what happens. I don't know what we have. What does Sudbury have to offer? Yeah, I know for sure. I am. I would probably be alone, but <laughs> you might. I think you'll do fine. Sudbury's Working a pretty a friendly mystery. town. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tomorrow morning, somewhere on the streets of Sudbury. But do I ever miss Van Gogh? Never. Never. It's uncanny. He what sound? Never. What sound do you guys have? What's your normal band band call? The ranges are on a, if, we, if we're on a bus, usually around like 4 a.m. 4 a.m. But if we're if we're doing it like in a, in a rented van, like a rented vehicle or something. We have like hotel that. room, so I have probably at least till nine to ten. Yeah, we got to work till eight yeah. or nine. So who's the guy who's always late for van call? I'd say no one's really been late, but you cut it close. Yeah, I've never yeah. been late. Uh, I, 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 I like to cut it a little. New close. Orleans is yeah. close, but that's about it. <laughs> but it's always right on time. How is New Orleans doing a show? How long ago was that? Um, that was a couple months ago. Eight months ago, maybe? Yeah, yeah. 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 It's my favorite night of my life, for sure. <laughs> so you guys, were you, well, obviously, I mean, Katrina happened. You guys probably weren't there pre-Katrina. Well, how's the town oh, now? We actually, oh, we actually how's the town? I actually oh, have been a few times visiting. It's my favorite city in the world. Yeah. It's good. I mean, it's kind of crazy to see, like, how it's actually still affecting the city. Like, there's, still, like, freeways that still haven't been rebuilt and stuff yeah. like that. But, I mean, there's so much history, and the people there are the nicest in the world. So the vibe's still awesome. I love, I love yeah, that. It's amazing. Great vibe. Vibe. All right, so you guys are doing this, doing the tour right now. What's next? Where are you guys off to uh, within the next year? Where's Stereo's going to be at? That's Excellent a, question. Writing and touring? Writing and touring. <laughs> it's a, Hopefully. It's a Same viciously old. good cycle yeah. that we are involved in. You know, we finish up. Just did a headline to our last album, so it's probably time to write again and do it again. Yeah, well, thanks a lot for being on the episode, guys. Really Thank appreciate it. Us. Have an awesome show tonight. Thank and uh, we'll be back with uh, Alex over in the 5 Minute Major after these announcements.
garden can turn an empty plate into a full belly. This year, plant and grow an extra row and donate the harvest to your local food bank. Plant a row, grow a row for the hungry. Help us help those in need. Oh, there she is. She is such a loser. I know. <laughs> what a geek. <laughs> Get lost. Words hurt. Don't be a part of it. I'm here. Here comes the music. Welcome back to the 5 Minute Major. I'm your host, Alex Francis. Today, folks, I have a very special guest, owner of Sudbury BJJ, Steve Jonka. Steve, thanks for doing this today. Hey, Alex. I guess first question I have is, your club trains only professional fighters. You guys take amateurs no. as well. Actually, most of our uh, members are recreational members. They train just for fun, uh, fitness, something to do. We do have some, uh, some competitive members who like to uh, compete in jiu-jitsu, Muay Thai, uh, you know, MMA. But literally like 80% of our members are just people like everyday people who just like to train for fun. Awesome. Yeah. When did you get your start in mixed martial arts? Well, the long, the long version is 25 <laughs> plus years ago. I uh, started doing martial arts when I was a kid for an activity. I uh, kept with it, kept with it, kept evolving. Finally saw, like everybody else, UFC, you know, one, two, Hoist Gracie beating everybody up on the ground. Couldn't understand what was going on. You know, here I was doing, doing karate, thinking that punches and kicks was, was the way to go. And then I thought, man, I need to learn what this guy knows, right? I eventually found Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in Ottawa. My instructor is uh, black belt under Hensel Gracie. Uh, he's trained extensively with uh, Hicks and Gracie as well, who's considered the champion of the Gracie family. And, uh, you know, I'm just so lucky to have brought that to Sudbury. And, and now we, we train the Gracie tradition here. Fantastic. Yeah. So while we're on the topic of Hensel Gracie, uh, you are part of a team that Chris St. Jean, a uh, Sudbury fighter, recently uh, won by devastating knockout uh, in the uh, Freedom Fight event in Sudbury. Uh, you're part of the same team. Do you want to speak maybe about what that win has done, like, has done for him and it, where do you see his career going? Well, Chris was uh, actually in line to fight at uh, Bellator uh, about a month ago, or a month and a half ago or so. Um, he, I'm sure you'll see him in a higher level organizations uh, soon. He's actually quite a talented fighter. Very nice guy, works really hard. You know, that knockout 24 seconds in front of a hometown crowd like Sudbury, I'm just so happy to, that he has uh, that type of success. You know, it's so, so great for him. And you recently uh, just ran your second successful Thai boxing uh, event. It's Rumble on the Rocks. Rumble on the Rocks. How did that come to <clears throat> pass and again, where do you see that going? Where do you see that event going? Well, we'd love to do a Rumble on the Rocks uh, two to three times a year. Um, you know, we've had two shows now, both went off great. Uh, you know, we want to showcase local fighters. We want to showcase Northern Ontario talent. Uh, it's amateur, amateur Thai boxing, Muay Thai, commonly known in North America as Thai boxing. Uh, you know, we just want to show the, uh, the give the guys a good, um, you know, amount of experience at the amateur level. And then the guys who are talented and want to take it to the pro, pro level, have uh, have you know home turf to try it out on Be without you know being up in Sudbury you know you got to travel at least four to five hours to do anything yeah. right it's not uncommon for us to drive to New York for one fight and drive back in a weekend you know what I mean so it's 17 hours there 17 hours back for one guy to fight if he loses in 10 seconds it's all for naught it's pretty that we go for some good Italian food anyways <laughs> <laughs> that's, right. that's great um, <laughs> So for guys that are into Thai boxing or any other discipline, how do you find mixed martial arts in particular as either added notoriety to those other concentrations or Definitely. detracted from them? No, for sure. You know, my school, we have Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and we have uh, Muay Thai. And you know, every time, uh, I always joke with the guys, every time someone wins in UFC by submission, I get guys signing up for Jiu Jitsu. And when every time someone wins by knockout, I get guys signing up for Muay Thai, right? Uh, I personally believe, you know, these two arts I've gravitated towards these two arts because it's, uh, it's the, uh, to me, it's the best combination for mixed martial arts, you know? Muay Thai, you've got your hands, you've got your boxing, you've got your clinching, you've got kicks, knees, elbows, all that stuff. But then you've also got your wrestling aspect there. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you have your wrestling, you have your ground techniques and submissions. And uh, to me, it's a complete system in, it, with those two arts. And of course, wrestling. Okay. And we're aware, um, 
I mean, your specialization is jujitsu. Um, so I would say, you know, to the purest who can watch a grappling match and appreciate it. I mean, what do you say to those people that, you know, I mean, in, in the events you hear it all the time, hey, why are you hugging on that guy? I mean, what do you say to those people in terms that maybe don't have that knowledge? You know, I think that uh, I would love to see the level of the, uh, uh, of the knowledge of the North American fans get to the point like it used to be in Pride. You know, we always talk about Pride. Uh, you know, the crowd would go totally quiet, and if someone's, you know, got out of a nice little submission hold, the whole crowd would just kind of golf clap, you know, like, very educated crowd, you know. So, uh, I'd love to see that happening in North America as well, eventually. It's getting better. <laughs> All right, Steve, your five minutes is up. Thanks, Thanks for doing this. My pleasure. Thanks again for watching. Back to you, Sean. Thank you very much, Alex, and of course, Steve Jonkis from Sudbury BJJ. I'm sitting right now with Green Goche, who is going to be playing an amazing song for you guys very soon. Uh, it's called First, we have a message from us at the episode. Hi, I'm Cliff, director of the episode. And I'm Alex, host of the 5 Minute Major. We are now looking for our female field reporter for the episode. We're looking for somebody who is dynamic, full of personality, and fearless. More importantly, they have to have a complete lack of shame to join our team. And you need to be hot. We are not that shallow. You will get to go to some amazing events. And pick up my dry cleaning. You also won't be picking up his dry cleaning, but you will meet some interesting celebrities and newsmakers in Northern Ontario. And get my latte. And when you get my latte, I need two twists of cinnamon and a mint leaf. You will definitely not be picking up his coffee. Latte. I only drink latte. Please ignore him. That is not what the job is about. Am I at least going to get a foot rub? I can't even explain to you how disgusting that is. You will not have to do any ridiculous tasks for the host. Please send in your resume and a headshot if you want to join the team at the episode. Thanks, boss. Welcome back to the episode. My name is Sean, and I'm here with the very lovely and talented Kareem Goze, who is going to be playing a song all for you guys. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Kareem Goze. If I like what I've begun But something told me to run And honey, you know me It's all or none There were sounds in my head Little voice go and this should end when I found myself listening cause I don't know who I am who I am without you all I know is that I should and I don't know if I can stay
And so I say to you, this is what I have to do. Cause I don't know who I am, who I am without you. Okuda. Here at Okuda, kids get to do tons of stuff. They take hikes, make campfires, do landmine training, throw grenades. Get down! Get down! And they get to shoot a real AK-47. We know where they've taken her. Imagine what a little time can do for your family. Thank you.